This video is packed full of great little tips that will upgrade your Stardew Valley and truly make you the smartest kid in class. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to get an infinite amount of key gems. But first, let's check this key gem farming method out. After completing the danger in the deep key quest, we can turn the mines into the dangerous version. And on floor 40, the mines will look like this. You will find mushroom enemies, spiders, and putrid toxic ghosts that will upset you. But we will also find some pieces of stray wood in here. This is not a very good method for farming for wood, but sometimes these pieces of wood might just be a stick bug but don't be alarmed these are the guys we are looking for because these stick bugs have a 100% chance of dropping a key gem so you could farm these guys for free key gems if you don't enjoy doing the key quests just remember to wear a burglar ring to maybe get two key gems instead of one and always use some monster musk so much more of these guys will spawn and most importantly remember that you can leave the mines and re-enter them to cause these guys to respawn. This method is quite effective. I made a video about how I never used Junimo chests because I could not think of a good use for them. But you guys left some comments on that video and it makes perfect sense. As you know, Junimo chests will share their inventory with all other Junimo chests, but they have a very small number of slots. But that is perfectly fine because we only really need a couple things in here, like furniture catalogs. The furniture catalog costs 200,000 gold and the flooring and wallpaper catalog costs 30,000 gold. These things are expensive, so why would we buy two of them? Well, we don't have to. Just keep them in your Junimo chests. Now you can use them on your regular farm as well as on your Ginger Island farm. It makes so much sense. These enemies in the dangerous mines are really annoying, especially if they are hiding behind rocks and you can't really get to them easily. These lava lurkers in the volcano are equally annoying. Sometimes they shoot fire at you from the middle of the lava pool and it is actually impossible to get to them. But did you know that you can destroy the fireballs in the air? This works best with a sword but the block special move of the sword does not block the fireballs. Only red regular attacks. You can also do this with a hammer when there are many many fireballs flying at you. Some emerald enchantments on your weapon will make this much easier. Now I know this is probably not the most helpful tip but it is pretty satisfying when you hit those fireballs and they disintegrate. We all love giant crops, right? I mean, look at these things. They just look so cool, right? As you know, you can get a giant crop by planting a cauliflower, a melon, or a pumpkin made 3x3 three three square. But it is not guaranteed. Luckily, we can just leave the matured crops until they turn into giant crops. It's effective. But what if all of your farming space has Junimo huts around them? Then, if you leave your crops in hopes of getting a giant crop, these pests Junimos will harvest them and make it impossible. Well, there is this little button on the Junimo hut that will prevent the Junimos from harvesting crops. And to be honest, this is literally the only time I could ever picture anyone using this feature. I guess I'm glad it exists. Also, don't forget to place a prismatic shard into your Junimo hut to cause them to be different colors. Okay, this tip goes straight out to the hoarders and comes from some insane significant drawing panda. Do you have a bunch of chests all over the place with random stuff? And if you need something, it takes forever to find it because it is randomly split across all of your chests? Well, just set up your chests like this with a sign behind them. This method is really good, but it has a problem. The signs behind the chests cause the setup to take a ton of space and you will need a ton of chests since it is very, very specific. Instead, create a bunch of chests with a specific color and only place items in those chests that are the same color. So place fiber into green chests and corn into yellow chests. This simple organizational method is way more effective than signs behind your chests. 
Okay, here is a simple one. Preservation jars or kegs? Which do we use? To be honest, we should be using both of them depending on the crop. Preservation jars will cause both fruit and vegetables to increase in value by 200% plus 50 and they can take between 2 and 3 days. But kegs are a little bit more complex. Kegs will turn fruit into wine after 7 days and increase the value by 300%. Kegs will turn vegetables into juice and they will increase the value by 225% but they will take 4 days so for efficiency turn all of your fruit into wine by placing them into kegs and turn all of your vegetables into pickles by placing them into preservation jars you can easily tell what type of crop it is by just inspecting it in your inventory based on the maths turning vegetables into juice using kegs is not really as good as turning them into pickles using preservation jars but fruit into wine is always better one of the puzzles for golden walnuts is really hard it's this rhythm puzzle where you have to match the song that is played by this creepy statue thing this puzzle is pretty tough if you have a bad memory like i do but this will get easier the more you fail the problem is that it is really easy to try this for the entire day pass out from exhaustion and then have to start from the beginning so instead just fail immediately on purpose at the very first pattern a bunch of times then we need actually actually try and complete it, it'll be much easier and you can get your free easy golden walnuts. Did you know that life elixirs are actually better than they appear to be? In the game, it states that life elixirs will heal you for 90 health, which is pretty good. But this text is wrong because life elixirs will always heal you to maximum health no matter how low your health is. You can buy life elixirs from Dwarf in the mines for 2000 gold, which is expensive, but it's kind of worth it if you ask me. Do you want to print key gems with a really easy exploit? Well, you can. And you should thank Salamans because I saw this on his video. Link in the description below if you want to check it out. Step 1. Find a bunch of golden walnuts. Find as many as you can. The more you find, the better. Then try and spend all of your golden walnuts. You can do this easily by just trading in your golden walnuts for key gems. Then press T and type forward slash recap nuts all in one word and hit enter and just like that you suddenly have some spare golden walnuts but you cannot use this command again it won't work unless you spend your golden walnuts at the store just buy a bunch of key gems until you have zero nuts left then repeat this process again type recount nuts hit enter get more nuts trade them in for key gems and repeat repeat this forever repeat this until you can buy whatever you need without even doing a single key quest. This exploit is absolutely game breaking. Wow. If you want to see some more crazy working exploits just like this one, check this video out. There are some really game changing ones in here. Thanks for watching. But for now, I will see you in the next video.